Hello, this is Joe Lenz with Century 21 Discovery, and today we are shaking it up a bit and turning the tables. I have the privilege of hosting Chamber Talk, having a conversation with North Orange County Chamber of Commerce CEO Andrew Gregson. So, Andrew, how's your day going, big guy? It's going all right, Joe. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for doing this today. Uh, I was a little bit nervous this morning thinking about it, but then on the other hand, you know, I'm only answering questions, so there Uh you go. Just a, just another good conversation between friends, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, Andrew, you've been in this role for almost two years now. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and experience prior to accepting this position. That's a good question. Um, well, I've done a, I've, I've been in business for many years, from being a child, uh, working alongside with my father there. In fact, that was my first uh, ever job. Uh, was uh, helping him sell tiles, grout, and then these little square things, spaces. Uh, so I, I do recall that. Um, and then moving forward, uh, I, was, I was in the military for a few years. I was a big part of it. I always wanted to be a police officer, but I was too young at the time, so I joined the Army. Learned a lot in the Army, and when I came out of that, I went and did a lot of jobs. So I've worked in the... Um, Oh, what do you call it? Building industry for building roads in Germany. We used to lay cobbles, being a machinist. Um, did lots of different jobs when I was in the military. Worked in a furniture store, being a firefighter. Uh, volunteer one, though, not like, you know, down here we have real firefighters <laughs> in Fullerton. Like it, was, it was like a village firefighting force, like it was back in 1908 or something. Um, You're not that old. I'm <laughs> not that old. And, uh, and, and then, of course, I, I'd worked for a great company in the UK called Moss Bros, who I worked at very quickly up the ranks through management up to be a regional manager. And it taught me an awful lot about sales, marketing and advertising um, and retail space. And I did go back to college, got my MBA, worked uh, for a manufacturing uh, car company that manufactured old cars, also was the uh, principal for for the classic car racing team. And then my last job, I worked as a chief operating officer for a law firm. Uh, It did living trust, so it wasn't really a very interesting um, sort of topic, how it's a very needy one. And uh, we did a great job myself and the team that we built around us, uh, building that company up uh, post to, to COVID. So, you know, how do you envision the Chamber of Commerce evolving and talking about that and COVID, but how do you how do you envision the Chamber evolving in the coming years and just how your organization is positioning itself to help its members and businesses succeed? I think the Chamber has to... This chamber had to evolve a little bit, as most probably are finding themselves doing that right now, because, you know, the type of business that we did before is, uh, you know, somewhat different to what we see today. And so I love the way that chambers used to reach out and be a, a really great community leader within the areas Um, You know, the way they used to do certain networking events and the way they used to really help businesses collaborate with one another and do that type of thing. So that we definitely need to keep. Where we're changing and what's going to be better for the area is we're looking at ourselves more as like a business hub rather than just like a a membership driven organization um, because we are a 501c6. Um, So... To me, we're doing a lot more things that are tangible to our members, that offer them services that are going to give them not only larger opportunities, but a return on their investment, whether they're a member, whether they're uh, purchasing some of the services or programs we're offering, or whether they're actually a sponsor of, of the events that we host. Hey, so Andrew, you know, you've had a quite a diverse background, and how have your past experiences prepared you to lead our Chamber of Commerce here in North Orange County? I think some of that answer is in your question. It's the, it's the experience. You know, we all, we all experience different things at different levels, and, you know, I've been sort of like a, a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, Um, However, as I've gone through life, I've really been able to be, I've had the opportunity to say that I've worked with some amazing people. And when you learn things from them, 
you you might go, oh, I don't want to do that. Well, you don't do it. Don't take it with you. Just right. learn from that mistake, right? right? It's like I don't have an older brother or sister, but if I had, I'm sure I'd have learned from their mistakes. Where my brother, he sailed through life easy street. Right? Mm. I was the idiot making all the mistakes. <laughs> so he's, he's done really well for himself yeah. at a very yeah. young age. Um, but I suppose back to that is, yes, it's the experience. It's what you gain from all the different areas you do, which makes you able to work with relationships a lot more because that's what this job is really about you know you have to build on and work on the relationships that you have with the membership and then all the other people who are going to help not only our organization but our members flourish and grow working with the cities you have de many different people in the city you know working from the mayor all the way down to to down to the city manager who's in charge of the whole place, really. Um, all the all the different staff that work for them. And of course, we do multiple cities because we're a regional chamber. So all this and the relationships you're building with that, then the government officials and all the rest of it. So to answer the question, it's to do with experience. And the more you have, the more better you're going to be. And especially if you're already sort of like a people person, is definitely definitely one of the top things you need to have to help. You know, you talk about regionality, I guess, the, the, and the chamber has grown from being just a, a small one-city chamber to multi-city. And how has that benefited the, its members? And, and, you know, what do you think of that? Oh, I love that leading question, Joe. Thank you. Um, well, the main difference for the members is it's their reach. As It's like any institution, right, or any... Uh, sorry, maybe I shouldn't say institution. In America, does that mean like a crazy farm? No. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So I was just checking, sorry. So it's like for any organization or business, right? I do get myself into trouble for using English <laughs> words over here, so I do apologize for that. Um, so as you grow, you know, you get affiliated with more people and more things and more businesses. And for us, it's not only just that part, it's our region. So, you know... We we have members down as far as San Clemente. We have people over the other side by Riverside. We have people over in LA, uh, in downtown LA, and of course all our other region. And we have that because people wish to do business within the North Orange County, and we are bang smack in the middle of it, really. Right. And for members, that allows them to have their reach further, not only when they go to a mixer and they might meet somebody who they'd never really bump into, but you see, when we're doing things online, or whether they're, you know, maybe they want to purchase an advertisement in our newsletter. We're sending that out to over 15,000 contacts, and they're everywhere. And as you know, marketing and advertising, it's like confetti, isn't it? You blow it out, and then you can sweep it all up because the churchyard doesn't want it all the mess in there. But some of that confetti you'll never see again. You don't know where it went. You don't know where it landed, and you don't know how it's coming back. You're right about so that. So that is how... I see the excitement part about being part of a of, of, of a regional uh, a chamber. So if you're going to sit with a um, a prospective member, mm. you know, talk a little bit about the regionalization of the Chamber of Commerce. And you know, if you were sitting with a, a prospective member, um, what do you think, and and what do you think they're most concerned with? The most important benefits that a Chamber of Commerce can provide them. And it's general membership. That's a pretty open question there, yeah. Joe. <clears throat> M members have different priorities. So, you know, if we were to, let's say we categorized our clientele, right, our membership. Right. So you have, you know, the, the small business that could be somebody who's either starting up, working from home out of their own little home office, or they have a little brick and mortar store or, or what have you. Then you have like the medium sized business, which, uh, is can scale from somebody who's been in business for some time, maybe even a, a law firm or something like that, or accounting company, um, and sort of like from X amount, let's say a million to five or so a year. And then, of course, then you've got that next bit, which jumps from the bigger scale where it could be a very large business or even a national or international corporation. And everybody's wants and desires are sectioned in different things. So 
the majority of our members are obviously people who live and work in this community. They really want help getting people in the doors, getting their name out. They love networking because they get to see who else is in the cities around us, who else they can work with, who else they can maybe sell or buy from, right? Um, the medium-sized businesses, they tilt her up a little bit more. So there could be more to do with um, maybe getting the word out because we have a huge reach compared to most, right? And you can't just go to a marketing company and say, help me reach out there. Who, who are they? But with a chamber, it gives you that legitimacy, doesn't it? Um, and then they may need a little bit of access, right? Happened to me only the other day. Uh, uh, a business in town, they called me. They... Their, their corporate office is not in, in, in the city and there's a bit of a you know misguided thing there and they said, look, we're stuck with this. Can you help us? I reached out to the city manager within the day or so, day and a half. City manager had got back to me, told me what it was. I corresponded it. They went, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with it, right? We, now we know what's wrong and we can figure it out. Um, so that's the access. And then when you get to the larger corporations, <clears throat> now they're on a whole different you know, mind game, right? So they're looking at, yes, access, but not to maybe the city necessarily. They may want access to some of the politicians who we, we meet with often or we have a rapport with. Or maybe they would like to do a big event or host an event so they could be the title sponsor. Um, Farmers Bank is a prime example. For years, they've been one of the, mon the main t uh, title sponsors for uh, the state of the city of Fulton. Well, last year we had over 300 people there. And uh, hopefully this time we're going to be about the same, if not a little bit more. And Mayor Young's really looking forward to having another great event. And farmers, we spoke to, we heard the, the president talking yesterday, Henry. He, he's going to be there talking to all these people. And again, now they get that uh, possibility for seven or so minutes to talk to a captive audience who is in business, right? right? And that could be their potential clientele. And so they think on a different like aspect than maybe the guy with the little with the little store, or girl with the little store. Um so everybody's different and we try well, we don't try, we succeed, I feel, in giving certain programs and offering certain services that generally help the majority of all those different businesses in their different ways. And well, I was going to say, we're always open. Right. If somebody comes to my door and says, hey, you know, how can I get to this? I'm always open to having a conversation and maybe there is something else we can do. I don't know until somebody lets me know, you know. Well, it's interesting, all, all the different levels of uh, membership, you mm. know, and, and I, don't, I don't mean, you know, technical levels, but level of operations and what their expectations are. That requires a whole different set of leadership skills. It does. So, yeah. So let's shift into leadership and, and what your thoughts are on leadership and, and where you got your experience and, and what you think some of the opportunities are and some of the challenges that you've had, you know, as you've in the past, you know, as you shifted into the Chamber of Commerce. Right. Well. There was a question there, right? So what do I yeah, think? It was just a long old <laughs> statement, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, there's lots of different things that I feel that assist in in assist me in doing what I need to do or look at things. So I know a lot of I know a lot of people over here aren't going to uh, agree with this next statement I'm going to make just because of you know. You know, we look back in the history book, 1776. You're not going to really agree with me that the British Army is the best army in the world because, you know, guys here with pitchforks beat us, right? <laughs> so, but a lot... I think we threw the tea in the harbor. <laughs> you you I, did yeah. that as well in Boston. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, they're still picking tea leaves out. They must have turned green because on Irish Day, Fatty's Day, the, the, the that's water's what, green. That's in Chicago. Oh, it is? Oh, well, it must have flown across or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how it all works. I'm not quite sure on the geography of America, unfortunately. Chicago's kind of in the middle, you know? Oh, it is? Okay. The well, harbor's over there on the East Coast. It must have. And, and yeah. we're on the West Coast. <laughs> Maybe they just did an American style and pumped the water over because that's you what know, they need to do. We we really need to do that. My my dad was talking. We don't have a, a water problem. We got a distribution problem. That, that, that's you true. Know, that's, he was ahead of his time. Yeah, that, but keep going. This is important. This yeah, is, it is. Sorry, this is important you. leadership stuff. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I feel a lot 
that I bring to the table is because I was so fortunate when I was in the when I served in the British Army to actually be in certain different departments where the guys who were in there they were all senior. So to break it down really quickly is when people join the military, um, you're going to have all your different departments, right? And you're all different areas when you're in a battalion. However, there's certain areas within that battalion where they usually only send the more senior soldiers because they're their experience. So going back to experience, right? Right. So I was in, I was working alongside a lot of people for a good several years who had an awful lot of experience and were willing to share it with you if you're willing to take note. Listen, so learning about strategies and marketing plans and all that type of thing, I feel that that 100% is very military base. When it comes to working with different people, the military runs like clockwork, right? Right. Well, if you take that ideology slightly and place it in more in a civilian field so you're not screaming and shouting at people right you're asking people questions you're listening to what they have to say and then you don't shoot from the hip you think about what their needs are and then you go out and somehow fix that solution or or uh, overcome that challenge you're also you where you execute things i think is also uh, extremely uh, important Timing is another. And having some type of empathy with feeling how that business is. And that's what I really do feel that North Orange County Chamber of Commerce in particular has over possibly some chambers, not all, but some, and definitely over different organizations is because we know what it's like to be in business. Uh, NOCC... It's a membership-driven organization only. We don't receive any government funding, um, you know, local city funding. uh, What's that? Bed tax. There's a name for it, right? Right. Um, Don't get any of that money. So we only make a revenue and are able to do what we do through membership. So we understand. That's like getting a customer, right? And then you're selling them on a service and or a product or whatever. So we definitely understand what it's like there out there for any business member, small or large, because everybody goes through the same stuff. It's just on a different scale, and uh, and I feel that helps us do a better job and service our members uh, at a at a at a better rate and 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 give them a far larger return on their investment. You know, as I'm listening to you, Andrew, some of the things that I'm one of the things that I'm I'm hearing is your your strategic planning thought process, and you know how you learn that in the military, how you learn that probably from your way back into your dad and his business and watching him strategize, and you know what what initiatives and strategies are you implementing? to ensure that the Chamber of Commerce remains not only competitive, but relevant in our business climate today? Good question. So um, last year, what we the, the main thing that we needed to do was uh, build a lot more, better, re- stronger relationships. So start at the top, right? Everything starts at the top yeah. and uh, basically, you know, folds into place. So we started with the cities, Bonner Park, Fulton, Stanton, La Palma, um, got listened to what the city managers had to say, what the city council members had to say, and then looked at how they felt that their um, city businesses required help that they're unable to give because they're busy running the city, and sit back and actually write a, a business plan. And, you know, people often say, oh, I've got plans in my head. That's no good, man, because uh, when you when you write down a plan, after a period of time, everything's going to make you go in a different way, right? You know, you're busy doing this or something else comes up or there's some world opportunity going on. So then you start focusing on that. But you need a home back into where you're going. You need to get back onto that path. And that's why writing a business plan just totally makes sense. So that was the first thing we had to do. Build relationships, make a plan, execute the plan, which we did. We've changed the way that uh, what people get as a member so that they get a far larger return of investment. For the moment, they'd stroke us a check. 
10 days later, they've way doubled the money. So don't even bother go to Vegas. Come down here to the chamber. <laughs> we'll make you more money on your return and your investment. <clears throat> We're a better gamble, excuse me. And then I also changed the way sponsorships were. If you look at a lot of sponsorships, and I know you've done sponsors things in, the, in, in your time, is usually people just get like you're on a little banner or they just name you at an event, and that's really about it. There's no, no return on that. So we've changed it around where when somebody sponsors an event at the chamber, which, by the way, thank you to anyone who's ever sponsored any chamber, you what you do for the community is tenfold than what you could even imagine. So don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking this area. But what we wanted to do is give people a better tangible return of investment. So everybody's got their own banners. They have a dynamic QR code, which will link them to wherever they want to go. And when they want to change it, we can do it. That's why it's called dynamic. Um, uh, they, they're at all events rather than one single event. Um, we're pushing their uh, any marketing that they would like. We can help push that through the advertising of the events, whether they're in the program or whether it's online. And all those types of things are more tangible and gives you the better opportunity to market. And we're just literally about to roll out a new business program, which is going to help businesses bring business to their doors. We're going to do um, profile, uh, you know, cl client profiling for the for the uh, for the business member. We're going to create and generate a qualified leads list. We're going to create and generate and post a mailing postcard, uh, like an 8 by 11 thing, so the big one. Right. And um, all you have to do is sit back there and wait for your phone to ring or people to start walking in your door. Uh, I went to a lot of the different people who I've used over the years in marketing and advertising when I was working for the law firm, and they, with their support, it, it turned the firm around the way we did the direct target marketing. And uh, we're also bringing in on and offline, it's not just one thing, and uh, it's scalable for businesses to do, but the main part is to literally pinpoint who your client is, tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, I'm here. come down and do some business. Um, and I feel that that, well, I'll give you an example. I just did it for somebody the other day, and they booked up the whole month worth of uh, bookings. So it works. It really does. You know, data analytics, and, and I, I think that's what you're really talking about. And and then there's that artificial intelligence. And, and I I don't think either one of those, well, I, I, I think the data analytics, to, to take the data that we have available to us and being able to uh, dissect that, and most of that is just daunting for, for most people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to be able to provide that service to where, okay, if you're looking for, if this is your demographic of what you're looking for as a business, we can narrow it down to that um, in a, for as close to a particular zip code as well. So I think that, that um, you know, you guys are, are definitely on the right track with that. So, you know, there's an accomplishment right there, Andrew, but what, what accomplishments so far are you most proud of in regards to our Chamber of Commerce? We've still got our doors open. Yeah. Like that's everybody big, else out there. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Um, uh, I I feel that it's almost like a round of applause for everyone in the region who's still, still in business right now. Uh, the last few years are the toughest that any of our generations – Hopefully, we'll see for the rest of our lives. Right. Uh, but we, we haven't seen since possibly Second World War or even before that. So, uh, big kudos to everyone who's still in bid uh, business. That that's that's definitely the first one, without a doubt. Um, and then I feel that working, um, building all the different relationships we've done is a big deal. And I'd like to say, and I'm not 100% sure because, to be honest, I didn't know what you're going to ask today on purpose. So I wasn't <laughs> like ready for everything and sounded like a like a parrot or a tape recording. Um, I think last year we uh, we upped our um, we upped our membership, I'd like to say, by about 35, 36 percent, which doesn't sound a lot. But in fact, that's huge when everybody's just coming out of a pandemic and they're worried about keeping the lights on. That's a, that, that is a big number. And the other thing that I've noticed is that people have a, a thirst for 
getting together. Mm. And, you know, and what I've noticed over the past year is, you know, we've gone from um, mixers, pre-COVID mixers, to where, you know, it was the same folks, same things, same conversations, same everything, um, to COVID to where no mixers, no uh, networking, no nothing, um, and then a gradual comeback. And there was a, and, and, go, and this kind of ties into the regionalization as well which is, um, you know, I would have never gone to the mixer in, in Buena Park. Mm. But, you know, it, that's part of our regional chamber. Mm-hmm. So we go to we go to that, and, um, you know, my goodness, I mean, there was, there was more than 100 people in that room mm-hmm. at minimum, um, and people that I, old members that I haven't seen for a long time, and then I was able to connect with new folks along the way. So very effective. Tell me more about that and the, and the planning that goes into making that a success. I'm glad you see that yourself, and I know that others have too because, you know, they, they, they share that information with us, which I love that too. I love about – what's one thing I love about working in this particular area of Orange County is people still have that connection where they will talk to one another. If we move a little south where right. I live, it's not, not so, so much. much. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, yes – what I think is bringing that together is that relationship building, going out, working alongside with the cities. The cities are very, very important to us. We, we, it's very easy to go, city, oh, man, I've done it again, or whatever, right? right? Digging up the road, or whatever problem somebody wants to look at it in a, in a negative light. But in fact, they are a business, very like the administration is. The administration of this country is running the country. It's a very hard job to do. The city is running the city. It's a very hard job to do. And there's lots of different working parts. And by working with them, you're you're sort of working already in towards your community. So I feel that's a big that's a big start there. And their support has been huge throughout this past couple of years, which has really, really helped. The other one is literally, yes, going out there and meeting different people, talking to people like yourself, asking if you want to go to a different mixer or or what have you, and going out there and meeting different people. And the word just spreads itself, a bit like that confetti uh, analogy. Um, And then the other one is, you know, our events aren't tailored to, like, one particular channeled thing. So... You might go to an event, yes, last week was for the grand opening of the uh, uh, Double Tree by Hilton um, uh, Hotel there in Bueno Park. However, people weren't just talking about that. It was talking about, you know, how you can do better business, collaborating with one another. Right. And that's what we're a lot more gauged in is helping businesses collaborate with each other because we, we, we're outside. I don't like using that, oh, look outside the box analogy because everybody's looking outside but we're 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 not in the middle of that individual's business every day we're we're sort of on the outside looking in rather than the inside looking out so it's easy for us to look at different members and what they do and then introduce them to one another and say hey have you ever thought maybe working together with such a body because they do this and you don't i think tying together might help you out and that's why i feel we're moving towards this more of a full business hub type help for membership community region and so on you know andrew one of the things that i've learned about you is that you are an emotionally strong person you have a good mindset and um you you go to work every day um, what inspired you to, and this is a two-point question here for you, bud, which is what inspired you to become CEO of the North Orange County Chamber of Commerce? And where do you find your inspiration on a daily basis? You know, when you wake up in the morning, what gets you out of bed? Hmm. Well, the alarm clock, <laughs> dog's cold nose, gets me out of bed. No, uh, on a serious note, <clears throat> my inspiration for wanting to do better every day because it's not just better at work. I want to better myself. Um, And it all starts actually the day before or maybe a couple of days before um, by preparing for that day that's coming up. So whether you, you know, 
get dressed properly. Uh, you're, you're ready for that day. Um, those are types of things that um, self-discipline is, is what works there. What motivates me to do it is that, you know, I have a fantastic wife who's a, a, an excellent partner and, and, and parent and confidant and, you know, fire starter. Um, and our little baby Farah, who's just turned three, um, you know, I look at those two and, it, you know, I would, I'd be going out <clears throat> working on the roads again if I had to, if that was how I was going to bring in the money. It wouldn't matter. I would just want to continue to do that. Be the best at that in order to grow and earn more money. That's of that's course. just how I am. As far as going with the chamber and everything is many years ago when I was working at a law firm, I was very heavily involved with Arcadia Chamber of Commerce. And um, I'd been asked to be on the board of directors, which I was. Then I, I moved on to be on the executive committee. And in 2015, I, I was actually the president. We call the president chair here at our chamber, but there it was the president of the chamber. And I did a lot of um, some of the things that I've actually implemented here. We did like 15, 10, 15 years ago there because it all works. Um, and so that understanding about how you can do something for a far lower, larger amount of people and really help them change their lives. You know, as long as I can pay my mortgage and everything, to be honest with you, that there's no greater value than being able to serve a community and to see that, that people can grow and it does better for them. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I seriously pondered on it first, but that's why I, when you asked, I, I, I wanted to join Rotary because I love the, I love what they what they have, you know, the service before self and then the four promises. Like, I, I get it. it right. It's something I want to do, and that's why I really love... I, it's been amazing <clears throat> meeting you and the journey we have with our relationship and working with some of the community things that we do because it's not just about business or earning money. It's about giving back and giving back in a great way. And by the way, I found out today, the blood drive last year we did, yeah. I wasn't allowed to give blood, right? Right. Because I was English and I had the mad cow disease and all the rest <laughs> of it, right? Remember? <laughs> yes, I do. <clears throat> I was so disappointed. Yeah, you were. And I was really upset because I said, that's BS because people need blood and you should change your mind. Well, I got a letter in the mail today, Joe. Guess what? They've changed their mind. So next blood drive, I can give two. You know what? It really makes me happy because that day, it was funny because that day when I walked out and I gave my, my gallon of blood or whatever it was, <laughs> you know, I, I thought, why did I wait so long to do this? You know, and, and uh, so ever since then, I have, I think, you know, once a quarter I'm able to give blood and I've done that. And it's a great service to our community mm -hmm. and to the world at large. I mean, there's a there's a major shortage of blood going mm -hmm. on right now, mm -hmm. and it's a lifesaver um, and a life giver as well. So well, I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm we really should do it again, Joe. I really, I think, I really think we should do it again. And I loved the, the, the people who came out. Man. Yeah, that, that was amazing, wasn't it? The they're support. genuine. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> then we'll do it again. Yeah. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. So, in closing. You know, what's the one thing you want people to know about the North Orange County Chamber of Commerce? Um, and I want to say you, but more importantly, what what's that parting thing that you want everyone to know? What what are you what are you thinking? North Orange County Chamber of Commerce is is more than just a chamber of commerce. We and I would invite Anyone and everyone who's within our region who is either in business or even thinking of starting or just about to start a business to let's let's sit down and talk. Like if you had bad experiences with the chamber, hey, let's 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 talk about it. Let let me let me share with you what we're doing now and maybe it makes sense for you to be a member again. Um our one hundred percent focus is on our membership, and it's not to grow our membership because that's going to happen anyway. But it's to help the member grow, regardless of what size the business is. And it is so difficult 
to be in business on your own these days. It's difficult. It's it's a very lonely area, isn't it, sometimes? Because you can't share everything with your spouse. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's because you don't want them to feel bummed out in the evening or whatever. Or, you know, you've got a problem and you, you're trying to figure it out on yourself. And I feel that that's where our chamber can come in. It's a safe space. Come in, in. Let's make an... Uh, most times I'm, I'm in the office, apart from when we're running around with everybody else. But... You know, I'd love to talk to you and, and talk things over and, and share ideas or spitball. We'd really like to start opening up a, a round table for people too. So, you know, businesses can just come in with problems or we can have a set of people. It's a bit like podcasting, really. Maybe we could do a call in or something, have a few people around this table and, and, and help them out. That's what it's about to me. So if you've been a member before or if you want current and you're not really quite sure what we do or how we can help, just please come on just contact us let us let us share with what you're doing and if you like it please join and if you don't that's okay too well you, you know you hit the nail on the head when you said you know leadership is a lonely place um and and can be mm. um you know but when you get that mastermind so mastermind group together um or like-minded and you know you talk about like-minded individuals who really can push that boulder up that hill so much faster mm -hmm. and more efficiently than, you, you know, trying to reinvent the wheel yourself. Um, and I appreciate that. And that's part of what you are establishing with the North Orange County Chamber. And that's that's important and that growth. Um, anything else you'd like to share with us today? I, I just wanted to mention that you, you're right. That's why, you know, it's a strange thing to say. But in my mind, like when I, when I, when I was dealing with, back in the day with North, uh, with uh, Arcadia Chamber of Commerce, I felt like when I went to one of their events, it really was a safe area for me just to actually forget what my problems were. But there are other people there who are like-minded individuals who some people, everybody's level of experience is different. So some people you know, you can share this story with, they're not going to look at you and think you're a you're a nincompoop or anything they're just gonna they're just gonna maybe offer some advice you can take it or you can't or maybe they go to just listen but the thing is is by feeling that you've got that support suddenly now you're not alone in business and when you when you what is it problem shared problem solved or whatever that right. old saying is um, I feel that that really is what it is in, uh, when you work with other like-minded individuals who are in business because it doesn't matter what their size is, everyone has the same issue sometimes. It's the funniest thing ever, like last like, tangent thing here, I suppose. But the other day at Rotary, uh, Scott Dowds from Farmers and Merchants Bank had brought his president, Henry Walker, yes. right? Yep. And just caught short to the event. I was at the board meeting at Rotary, yes, you and were. they were talking about how um, they, uh, the bank had just gone with Zell, right? <clears throat> so I mentioned it to to Henry, and he goes, "Funny thing about Zell," he said, "the reason why we hadn't done it for a long time, because oh, believe me, I kept asking Helen all the time right. when they could do it." Um, he said, "was the the situation we we're in is the." The companies that the company that we utilize to do this like online transaction type banking, uh, the IT co uh, company, you had to have a date of birth in there. So they struggled with, well, how are we going to fix this out for everybody who, how, how are you going to find that out? So then they came up with an answer and it's fixed. Well, that's a huge corporation, billions of dollars, right? That's right. what he was telling us yesterday. Right. Well, we're a little chamber. And we have the same problem sometimes with growth zone and Sarah and myself are always discussing well how we can make that better. So like I say, it doesn't matter whether you're huge or whether you're tiny. It's all experience because we all seem to see very similar things that happen or the patterns in business. And that experience, when it's shared, it's a wealth of knowledge. And um, that's why I feel it's a safe space because you can go there, you can chit chat about it if you wish and walk away feeling a lot better. Well, you know, uh, uh, and you talk about the safe space, and that's that's critical to just people in general. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's in the boardroom yeah, or at a meeting or, you, you know, wherever you happen to be, it's, you know, we, and you get back to that like-mindedness, 
it it becomes automatically a safe space. And then you wake up in the middle of the night thinking, you're not the only one. Yeah. You know, you got people out there that are striving to win just like you are. Yeah. Andrew, I think today was was just an, an amazing time spent with you. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to spend this time with you and kind of reverse the tables a little bit and let people get to know you a little bit better. And, you know, we're North Orange County Chamber is in in great hands with you at the helm. Yeah. Uh, and I recognize that, you know, we're just stewards in our lives as we go along with mm-hmm. what we have and, and what we're charged with. But I can tell you that under your stewardship, things are are going very well, and we can rest assured that your intentions are exactly what us business owners really need along the way. So thank you for that. Thank you for your job. Um, thanks for joining me on Chamber Talk, Talk today. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it, Joe. In fact, I wouldn't be a great steward, because you are a member, to just let you say, hey, Joe, what is, what's your business called and what do you do? <laughs> well, thank you, Andrew. Uh, I, I own Century 21 Discovery with my family, and uh, we are proudly located on the corner of uh, Valencia Mesa and Harbor Boulevard, and we've, uh, we're have we celebrating our 36-year anniversary, or actually moving into 37 years in business here wow. in Fullerton. And, and uh, we, too, consider ourselves North Orange County and just, uh, you know, we, we, we love what we do, and we've got great people that work with us. And, and uh, so anybody that needs to list or sell their home and, or buy, we're here to help. Thank you, Andrew. Of course. Appreciate that. That's what it's all about. That's right. Well, thank you very much thank again. You. Charge on. For those of you tuned in, thank you for listening, and we invite you to visit nocchamber.com and select Sign Up for News at the top of the page to join our mailing list. For more interviews, visit chambertalk.podbean.com, and we invite you to like, follow, and share Chamber Talk.